guys, hope you guys are excited for today's service. My name is Abed, and if you're new here, a warm welcome for you. I'm going to share a few announcements, so please stay with me so that you guys know how to get plugged in. The first announcement is that we have these online devos or devotionals going on throughout the week. They're basically ways that we can learn more about the Bible and hang out with our tribe group. For more information, please contact your tribe leaders, and if you're not a part of a tribe yet, then make sure to message in the chats and or in our Zoom room. And then the second announcement is that we have Friday Fuel. Every Friday, we either play games, watch movies, or have Instagram Live. Make sure to follow our Instagram account at thecollective.news to stay updated on how we'll hang out this coming Friday. And lastly, we have these TCU services every week, same time, same link, and also come hang out with us after service to play some games. And that's all for the announcement. Let's begin the sermon. Hey guys, it's your girl Sansi, and I'm so excited to be here with you guys today as I share on our second week of our series called Vibes. Last week, we heard from Nadine as she was talking about how because of Jesus, our emotions don't have to be the boss of us. And to be honest, I really love that topic because I used to believe that in the past, whenever I would show my emotions around people, um, that showed weakness. And I remember I would go home and get mad at myself and like look at myself in the mirror and be like, Sinzi, what are you doing? Why, why did you cry when nobody else was crying? Why did you feel that way when clearly everybody else was not there with you? And because of that, I would end up getting angry and I would take it out on other people unconsciously. So like whenever my mom would come into my room and she's like, hey, Sansi, can you check out, take out the trash? Can you do, do this, do that? I would lash out at her. And I'd be like, mom, you're so annoying, get out. <laughs> because I was so angry at myself that I, I don't know. I just wanted to take it out on her. And I feel like that's when I start to realize that maybe anger is a powerful emotion. Maybe there's something behind it that at the time I couldn't really connect. But as I grew up and got older, I started to realize that anger can easily take over our bodies and it can actually control the way we speak and the way we behave. And it can be either constructive or deconstructive. It's so funny when I think about moments where say you're walking down the street, you're at a mall, you're somewhere, and there's people walking ahead like in front of you. And they just happen to be the type of people that seem like they don't have a care in the world. Like they just want to walk slowly for some reason. Like they don't care who's behind them. <laughs> they just walk slowly. And as far, as far as it goes for me, when this happens, I get so frustrated. I get so mad. Oh my God. 
And I just start coming up with things in my head of like how to tell them, like, can you move? Can you get out of the way? Can I, can I go around you? Like, can you please let me go? And sometimes I actually say something or other times I just keep it to myself and then I wait or I actually do find a way to get around them. But the thing about that is that once I do get around them, then I finally feel like I can breathe. It's like all those last couple of seconds that I just spent walking behind them were taken away from me and I'm angry. I'm frustrated. And I feel like my whole schedule is messed up and my timeline of the day, it, it's just not going to work because I lost 30 seconds walking behind slow people. <laughs> and I know for a fact, I can't be the only one that feels this way. So if that's you, comment down below, let me know. I can't, like, I'm not the only one here, right? But that's what I'm trying to get at is how, although there's a difference between being angry and frustrated, that's when you realize that anger is a powerful emotion. It can drive you to places that you didn't even know were possible. And the thing about it is that it doesn't always look the same. Sometimes it means yelling at someone or losing your temper, or it can mean giving the silent treatment to someone. Sometimes when someone's mad at you and they're not saying a word, it's even worse. In fact, maybe you're the one that's really good at giving the silent treatment because that's the way for you to process your anger, but also the way that you feel like you have control over the situation, right? And not only is all that anger bad, but I also like to believe that there's good anger. You know, I think that there's anger when we feel when we see injustices. And I, I think a lot of us experienced that this year and what it's like to get angry when things happen in the world that aren't right. For a lot of you guys, um, it was probably the first time where you got to experience what that looks like and when that feels like when you saw someone being mistreated in an unfairly dehumanizing way. It could have been because of racism. It could have been because you saw people were not taking seriously the causes that you're about, you know, and among of other things, but the, it's in those moments that getting angry is good. You know, like I think about Jesus when he flipped the tables because he saw how the people had turned the temple into a marketplace. He got so angry that instead of going to the temple to worship God, they were there to make money, to make profits. And he flipped the tables. And so he had that righteous anger in that moment. And that's when, I, that's what I like to call constructive anger. It was for a good cause. It was for a good reason. It was used for good. Yet there is anger that can be destructive at the same time. And that's when it moves towards regret and hurting people. So I want us to go back to what I said at the beginning, how in the past, and if I'm being completely honest, sometimes in the present too, uh, whenever I show or I have really strong emotions, I beat myself up and I end up feeling angry, frustrated, and bitter. And how many times has that happened to you? How many times have you been angry, but you didn't know why? Or maybe you did, but you couldn't let your ego and your pride aside to admit to yourself or others. Today, we're gonna look at a passage from James in the New Testament, where we'll get to unpack those questions and hopefully we'll answer them too. So it says on James chapter four, verse one, it says, what is costing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want what will give you pleasure. Man, that's heavy. There's a lot there. There's a lot in, the, in those verses we just read. But let's just hang in there because I think that if we can learn to break this down and really allow Jesus to come in and speak to us today, I believe it'll change everything. So let's just start from the beginning where it says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? You know, oftentimes 
people experience a powerful emotion, um, like anger. And when they do, it's because there's a deeper, deeper issue in place. And usually it's connected to something of the past. Maybe they've been hurt over and over by someone, whether or not it was the same person. And that hurt turned into anger, and that anger turned into a defense mechanism. Like, have you guys ever met a bully or someone at school that always seems to be angry? You know, like no matter what it is, no matter where you're at, they're always angry about something, they're always frustrated, and they're always trying to start a fight. Well, have you ever stopped to think that maybe it's because underneath all that anger, there's hurt? And maybe, just maybe, that person I'm talking about is you. Maybe you're the one that's been hurt over and over. And because you've put up a wall around you and you don't let, you don't let others come in, you don't even give them the chance anymore. And over time, that anger has become your best friend. And it's been masked by all of these other things that all of a sudden humility and love and grace is thrown out the window. It says, don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? See, you see other people having the life that you wish you could have and you get mad, you get jealous, you get bitter. It says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You lash out when things don't go your way. You blame others for your own mistakes and actions. It says, you're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. See, like gossip, betrayal, hurt. That's what it all leads to. Nothing good comes out of that anger. I personally spent years being angry at the world, at myself, at my parents. And I did everything I could in my power to hurt others just to try to get them to see how much pain I was in. And then the second someone would come and ask me, hey, how are you doing? I would run away. Or I would put up a front and just be like, oh, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, no worries. You know, and because I didn't want anyone to know how I was feeling or why I was feeling it. But I, but I did want them to suffer for it. And I burnt so, so many bridges because of it. Is I thought that what I was doing was the best thing for me. I thought I was taking care of me. I thought I was looking out for myself and my future. You know, and what I didn't realize is, is that that anger in that moment was actually destroying the future that I could have or that I could have had because I was destroying more than actually building anything. And that's what anger can do to you. So let's just continue as we close off this passage. And it says, yet you don't have what you, what you want because you don't ask God for it. See, at the time, the last thing that was in my mind was looking to God for help. I thought I could do it all by myself. In fact, I wanted to do it all by myself because I kept thinking I was strong. I was a survivor. I was superior to the rest of the people around me because I had survived. See, I thought that I didn't need him. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want what will give you pleasure. See, whenever I did look for him and pray for something, I was being selfish. And there's something about being selfish that it really takes away all the beauty and the goodness that God wants to bring into your life. Because I thought I deserved good things, my anger was the only thing I could see and feel. It had become my defense mechanism. And for almost four years of my life, I lived that way, masking my pain with anger, with bitterness, with jealousy, hurting everyone around me nonstop, lying to myself saying that it was okay because one day they would understand. Because that's the thing about hurt and pain when it's not dealt with it bleeds into everything else in your life because hurting people hurt people. And that's why I think it's important to allow ourselves to feel our emotions, not to let it control us, but instead ask why. Why do I feel angry? Get to the root of the problems. Let's connect the dots because I assure you 99% of the time, you guys, the root of that anger is pain from a past experience that maybe you haven't dealt with. And that's why we get triggered so easily. 
and we let it control almost every aspect of our lives. But how do we do that? By coming to Christ, who knows all things, who created us and wants the very best of our lives. Who, the one that wants you to live in abundance and use that anger to fight for something good and constructive. The one who desires for you to lay it all down and have overflowing peace in your heart. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says that, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. See, in this, he's saying, hey, that anger you're feeling right now, let me take it away from you. Hey, that baggage you've been carrying around for so long, filled with bitterness, jealousy, betrayal, hurt. Let me carry it for you. Let me heal you. Let me in. And my prayer is that as you guys are in this season of life where every day you're facing something new, you're experiencing new things and a different emotion, and you're growing up in a world that maybe you, it's not what you thought out it would be. But my prayer is that you take this opportunity today to allow him into your life and to help you grow into someone humble and gentle at heart. Someone whose life reflects who he is in you and who you are in him. Someone who won't let anger control you. But because of him, we don't have to let anger and all those emotions control us. We don't have to let it burn all the bridges that we've been building in our lives. We don't have to let it stop us from dreaming of a good, beautiful, abundant life, the life that he wants for us. And so with that being said, I just wanna close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this moment that we all got to share. God, I just pray for each and every single person that watched this um, sermon. I pray that, um, God, that you will touch their hearts and that they will let you and that'll let you come in and see all those parts of us that we've been hurt, that we're angry, God, and that you will come in and take it all away and heal us, God, and that we'll surrender it all to you, knowing that in you, that's when we find peace, that's when we find rest, that, that with you, we'll get to live that abundant life that you desire for us, God. And so I just pray that as we go on and talk on our Zoom calls that, God, Maybe some of us that have never opened up will open up for the first time. And we'll talk about these things, knowing that you've put amazing people in our lives in this journey, that we don't have to walk it alone. And so I just pray in your name, amen. All right, guys, it was awesome talking to you guys. I hope to see you at our tribes. See you, bye.